Okay, the Mishnah and Lamed Vomim and Aleph. Asmichos. The Torah tells us, Vishachat Vishomach. Regarding a korban, you slaughter and then you lean. Now it's interesting. We discussed once that there's two types of mitzvahs. There's certain mitzvahs that you could delegate, and the mitzvahs are known as mitzvah shabagufo. Mitzvah shabagufo you can't delegate. For instance, filling. You can't delegate some what you would fill on your behalf. Eating matzah, right? You must eat the matzah. You can't delegate it. There are other mitzvahs that which can be delegated. Even stalker. Shluch Khan you can't delegate. You, you, you have to say, you say, well, when you come upon a nest, a mother, you, you send it off, you represent me. It's Allah, the person himself has to send off the mother bird. Can't have somebody else send off the mother bird. Smicha can only be done by the one who actually brings the korban. It's his korban. You cannot delegate, you can't do it through a shliya. So there's a tosis, there's a mission Gittin. The mission in Gittin discusses the case there's a principle in get lachamisa that if a person appoints an agent to deliver a get and he dies before the get is delivered to the wife it's not a valid get because the person can only represent the husband only as long as the husband's alive the husband should die before the get is given so the person ceases to be the agent of the husband so let's say a person sends a get Medina Sayyam sends a get from overseas and it takes him two years to deliver the get so the Mishnah says it's a valid get. Why? Because there's a presumption that the husband is still alive. There's a cheskes chay. There's a presumption as when the get was given, he was alive. So he's still alive. And the same thing, the Mishnah says a person sends a chatos, a sin or thing. So the agent is able to bring the chatos on his behalf to deliver the chatos. So the Tosis says a question. But a chatos requires smicha. How could you send the chatos with an agent? He's, the agent's not able to do smicha. So even though he may be alive, but the korban, post facto, if it's brought, it's a valid korban. But how does one bring it? So Tosa explains, we're talking about chatos mm. of. The haloch of smicha is only regarding an animal. Regarding a bird, there's no smicha on a bird. So when the Mishnah says, Shuleach chatosim, it's being a chatos of, it's not speaking of an animal. But if an animal, It'd be a problem because it's, it's, it's not proper. Because the owner who brings the carbon says v'shochat v'shamach. Again, the smicha is only mentioned v'shochat. A bird has malika, which the mission is discussed in a moment, right? The kohen takes his thumbnail and puts it through the back of the neck of the bird. That's how he kills the bird. No, no, of course. Not. So now, it's interesting. The Gemara says in. Uh, and Zvochim, that in fact, Malik is Nevela. The Torah says the only thing which changes its status, which classifies as kosher, is only Shechita. But the Malika, when the Kohen kills the bird with his thumbnail, the, the bird is, is Nevela. It's, like, it's a killed bird, except the Torah allows the Kohen, normally the person eats Nidla Sof Torah, the person eats the Nevela of a kosher species. He becomes tome when it goes down his gullet. Right? Other dead carcasses contaminate through contact. The divlas oftor only contaminates there in the base of Leo when you swallow it. So over here you have the, the of is with open chatos. The chatos is eaten by the kohen. Chatos of is eaten by the kohen, even though it's in the Vela, he, Of course, he's, the mitzvah is that he should eat the bird. He, of course, he doesn't, but even it's in the Vela. But let's say a zor. Let's say a non kohen would eat that, that bird. A person who is not permitted, he would receive malchus for what? For the veil. He's eating the veil. So he's eating something which wasn't richly slaughtered. So as a result of that, he, he'd receive malchus. But the kohen, of course. Why is the Torah of the kohen eating the veil? Kzer Sakosov. Kzer Sakosov. Says, whatever he eats, eats the whole thing. The crop he throws away, he sprinkles the blood, eats the rest. And we can't learn from a woman that he can use smicha with the face forever. No, 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 no. What's one thing? What's a woman have to wear? Because a woman who brings a bona fide sense of shkita. No, she no. Woman doesn't require. A woman doesn't do shkita. This, these are the exceptions of a woman. We discussed the Mishnah. No, but she brings a chatos. She doesn't. She doesn't. She doesn't bring the chatos. 
she yeah chatzos oh chatzos oh she brings she of course okay. she inadvertently violates Shabbos right that's what she I has to bring an animal yeah definitely she can't do smicha that she can't she has no obligation to smicha she has no obligation to smicha it's not she can't no 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 she would bring an animal yeah she'd bring an animal but cow whatever a man would bring she would bring except the man she has no there's no reason to smicha then right she has no there's no smicha in that. Right, correct, correct. There's no speaker. Because it says, Vishochat Vishomach. And we'll see the more Hat Trufos. Trufos is the waving of a korban. Now, Tosis explains the Mishnah is discussing two categories here. We're talking about things that are done by a non Kohen. Smicha is done by a non Kohen. Trufos is done by a non Kohen. The waving of a korban. So we're saying, now, from this point onward, it's speaking about the Kohenis. When I've been speaking, because even the male, not Kohen, has no relevance to this. So the first two we say, Smich only has relevance to a male Jew, not to the female. Whether she's a Bas Kohen, not a Bas Kohen. Same thing with Tnufa. Hagoshos. Where you take the Mincha and you touch it to the corner of the Mizbeach, which can only be done by a Kohen. So what about a Kohenis? What about a Bas Kohen? Haknitzos. What about kmitzos? You meet, bring a, a meal offering. So the Torah says, is you do kmitzos. Kmitzos is when you take the palmful of, of flour, with its oil, whatever's in there, and it's the equivalent of three fingers, because he takes his, his pinky, the small finger, and he. The Gemara says that it's uh, vochim. Then one of the most difficult I've noticed in the, in the base of English was, was kmitzos because he's not permitted to have any flour, any of the mincha between his fingers. That means his fingers have to be pressed when he gathers the mincha, whatever it is, the different types of nochos, he has to gather his fingers are to- so tightly pressed that nothing can be be- between his fingers. And then he goes and uses his thumb and the lo- lower finger to actually, if there's anything protruding, to wipe it, and it's all limited to what's between his, is is captured by his three fingers. That's Kamitsa. Kamitz can only be done by the coin. So if Mars says it's Vochim, regarding a regular animal, how many how many avodas do we have? We have four avodas. The Dalar avodas, the Shechita, because it's relevant. To the Shechita, you slaughter. There's Kabola, you receive the blood in the ministry vessel. There's Holocha, you transport the blood, and there's Rika, and then you sprinkle the blood. Okay. No, 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 no. I said Dalar avodas by a korban. The korban. Actual. That's something else. You have. That's you have to consecrate the animal also. Uh, I said the, the, uh, this is pre-slaughtered. So smicha is pre-slaughtered before it says the sobach mishochat. But the shechita, the kabbalah, the holocha, and the zrika. By kmitza, they're also the four. Kmitza is the equivalent of shechita. And you take the kmitza, you put it into a minstering vessel. You put it into a klinsharis. So putting it in the klisharis, that's equivalent of kabbalah. You're receiving it in the minstering vessel. Then the coin takes that vessel, transports it to the Mizbeach, then he takes it, puts it on the fire. Putting the Kamitza into the fire, that's the Rika. So we have four, four Avodas. We have the same thing. The Halach is the Kohanim, you have Lechem Aponim, the base of Mikdush. Lechem Kaponim could only be eaten by the male Kohanim, because it's Kochi Kodoshi. Okay? It was, the, it was divided among the ingoing and the outgoing Mishmar was officiated that week and the new ones that was divided every Shabbos Shabbos afternoon right the, in, the incoming and the outgoing Mishma now on the Shulchan there's what we call Shnei B'zichei Levona there were two cups of incense the Kohanim were not permitted to eat Lechem upon him until the B'zichei Levona was sacrificed so the Gemara says that removing the B'zichei Levona from the Shulchan that's the equivalent of shechita. Okay? And then afterwards, you would put it into the in, Shoris, then you would transport it, then you would burn it on the Mizbech. This is on the Mizbech Azov. You would burn on the Mizbech Azov, on the golden, that's the incense altar, and then afterwards, you would, you would eat the Lechem upon it. Also, you have Dalar of Otis. So you would think that as shechita, the Gemara says in a in, in number of places, that shechita is Ksher Bizar, even a non Kohen is qualified to Shechita. So maybe a non Kohen should be qualified to Kmitza. Kmitza is the equivalent of Shechita. So if a non Kohen is qualified to do Shechita, 
the non Kohen should be qualified to do Kmitzer. But the Gemara is going to cite a Pesach that says Bnei Aaron. Bnei Aaron, only Bnei Aaron are qualified to do Kmitzer, so a non Kohen is not. But what about a Kohenis? What about a Bas Kohen? Maybe she's qualified. So the Gemara is going to say it says Bnei Aaron, but no Aaron. Only the male Kohenim, not the female. Okay? There's a question, lengthy discussion. Tosis somewhere in Tzvachim. Now, the haloch is fa'avoda, you need a kli shoris. It has to be a minstering vessel. That means a kli that's consecrated. What about if a person uses a kli chol? Let's say the blood, we speak about Kabbalah, the blood has to be received in a kli shoris. What about if it's not a kli shoris? It's not a valid Kabbalah. Because the blood, when it goes to kli shoris, the blood is sanctified. It's sanctified when it goes into that kli. It's called Kedusha's kli. Sanctified by the vessel. What about the knife that you slaughtered the carbon with? Does that have to be a cliche race or not? So it's not so simple. It's not so simple. So um, what, would, what would be the rationale? Of course, it's called Avoda. It's one of the dollar voters. So since it's one of the dollar voters, just as the other voters, the voter has to have cliche race. So maybe the stocking, the knife has to be a... Uh, has to be a cliche race. Wait, 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 wait. Look, I'm just telling you what Tosa says. Tosa is Vokhin. Give me the fifth paragraph. You take a look over there. So Tosa says, since it's called one of the Dalar Avoda, it's called Avoda. It isn't Avoda. First, no Shechit Machutz. It's called Shechut Echutz. It's called Dalar Avodas. So just as the Avoda needs a cliche, it's maybe the Sakin. And what? A Zor is qualified. We say, no, since Shechit Akshayr is Zor, the Shechit of a Korban, even non coins, maybe that means it's not an Avoda. Even though it's called Avoda, but in regard to Klisharis, maybe it doesn't require any Klisharis. One doesn't need the Mitzri vessel. Tosa goes back and forth. Tosa concludes. He cites a Gemara in Psochim, uh, the famous Gemara that speaks about when Hilo first became Nasi. Hilo originally came from Bovil. He came to Eretz Israel, and the Bnei Bisera, who were his relatives, they saw his level of Nebu in the Siam. When they saw Hilo came, they actually stepped down from the Messius, and they allowed Hill to become the Nasi. And that year was the first time there was, it was, uh, in, a, in a long time, it was Erev Perez Pesach for Shabbos. The 14th came out on Shabbos. It was a question, are you permitted to slaughter the Karm Pesach on Shabbos? That was the question. So, uh, at first Hill didn't know, then afterwards he says, Jews know what to do. They know what to do. Sure enough, next day, people came with their sheep, and the question is, what about the knife? So it says they entwined the, the knife in the fleece of the sheep. Everybody brought their own knife. They brought their own knife to do the Shechitah's Pesach. So, t- so it t- seems to be, it was their own knives, it was the Klisharis. The knives weren't consecrated, it was, it was their own, what they called their own Chalaf from home. What they normally would slaughter all year, that's what they brought. Tosa concludes, one doesn't need a clean show. So Tosa has a problem. Tosa has a problem. He quotes a Gemara in Soto, the Gemara says in Soto, that what's the reason why you have a clean show? It's to sanctify the dam. The Gemara, like I said, when the blood goes into the clean show, it becomes sanctified. It's called Kedusha's clean. It's what the Gemara says, that the sakin is Makamish the dam. That when you slaughter the carbon, the sakin sanctifies the blood. Even though it already had a kedusha from the sakin, kedusha sakin again. There's another kedusha. You have a double kedusha. So evidently, so Tosa says from there, what do you say? That the sakin is how could a sakin be makadish unless it's a klishores? If the sakin is a klishores, we understand when he slaughters every, the blood touches the knife touches the blood when he cuts the shmei money, right? They cut in the veshet. Okay, so the, that touches every bit of the blood in the animal. The blood is touched. So the dam is in Scottish, it's sanctified. So then when it goes into Klisharis, again, again it has Kedusha. Okay? So, you see from there, it's the same belief that the Sakin is a Klisharis. Because if it's not a Klisharis, how does the blood become sanctified? That's, that's Tosa. Tosa's answer is that it's no, no proof. It's the Maisa Shechitah's Makadosh. 
It's the act of slaughtering, that's what's Makadish. When you slaughter a carbon, it's not the, the Kli that's Makadish, it's the Maise Shechit is Makadish. That's what Tosin says. Therefore, it's no proof. Therefore, they would use an ordinary knife, not a consecrated knife, and it's Makadish the Dama. Okay? That's a Gzer Sakosu. Because that of all, there's only Koshim Bekoim. Anything has to do with Koim, Mikabola Ve'elech, the Gemara says, only Koim. What? But slaughtering, it says a kolk sher in lishchot. Everybody, even a woman can slaughter. If a woman slaughters a korban, it's valid. Once discussed this many years ago, the Allah is, if a person makes a nether, he says, this loaf of bread is off limits to make. And then, he says, low B should be like a low faith. He didn't say, he says, low B should assume the identical status as low A. But the first one he already prohibited would nether. B becomes A. Why? Because it says, lindo nether. So from there we learn that it's called tatfosa. That if you want to draw, you want B to be as A, B assumes the identical status as A. But it says, Lindo Neder. So more says, only Dovra Nodav no Dovra also. What about if you take a piece of Nevelo? Which the Torah prohibits. That's not man made. That's not a man made. So the Torah says, there's a prohibition called Nevelo. Takes a piece of Chazir, pork. And he says, let this kosher meat assume the same status as the pork or the Nevelo. It, it, it's meaningless. Why? Because the Torah says, Lindo Neder Dovra Nodav no Dovra also. Something which is. Prohibited through nether, but not through something which is previously also, which was prohibited by the Torah. Okay, it's more than during the first period. So he asks a question on the Rambam. The Rambam says, "What's a bechor? Why is a bechor consecrated? Why? It's natural. The Torah says the pete rechem is naturally consecrated. Yet the Rambam says that if a person goes." And has besar bechor, the meat of a bechor, which is eaten only by the kohen, and he takes an ordinary piece of meat and he says, "Let B be like A, B assumes A, same status as A." So they all ask on the Rambam, but the bechor is davar also. Why is that different than the veila and and, and chazir? You t- take the veila and say B should be like A. It doesn't mean anything because it's not created by man. It's not a provision which is created by man. So why Bechor, when you say B should be like A, why does B assume the, the, the status of A? Bechor is also, Davros is not Davra Nodor. That's the question they ask on the Rambam. The Ram says, A chatichas Bechor, a chatichas Bosor. I guess it's interesting. It's not a chatichas. Okay. So the Nitziv says, the Nitziv explains that we just said when you slaughter an animal, it assumes not the level of Kedusha. Right? It's called Kedusha Sake. The slaughter, it, so that's man made. That's a new degree of consecration. It's true. Naturally, it's, it's better Rechem. It's Kodesh Mi Rechem. It's activated naturally when it goes through the womb of its mother. But when you slaughter it, you do the Shechita, it's called Kedusha Sake. It's, it's a new level of consecration. So when you say B should be like A, we're not talking about the original Kedusha of the Bukhar. That whatever added Kedusha comes about as a result of the Shechita, that's what's transferred. So it's not Dabros, by the Veil or Chazir, whatever it is, it is. That's the Torah prohibits. There's no added Yisr. Correct? But over here, because there's an added Kedusha as a result of the Shechita, that's why it's considered Dabra Nodur. Therefore, when you say B should be like A, and the Ram says specifically, Chatichas Bukhar and Chatichas Chulim. And you say B should be like A. That's why B assumes the A. Okay. Let's talk about smicha, atrufos. Okay. Before we go further in the Mishnah, let's see Tosa. Tosa is a question, and it's clear Tosa is consistent with Shitosa. Before the the Mishnah says that a, a woman is not obligated to circumcise her son. Okay? And the more sites of the puzzle. 
Tosa says the kasha. What do we need the faucet? Mishnah says mangrama. Correct. Remember, Tosa asked the question. So Tosa explains that the Gemara is not in halacha because we hold that mila belayla is not valid. So since mila belayla is not valid, it's Mishnah says mangrama. So according to us, the way we rule that mila belayla is not valid, we don't need a pasuk. But since there is an opinion that holds mila belayla is kosher, it's mm-hmm. valid. So once the obligation begins on the eighth day, it continues uninterrupted. Therefore, we need a puzzle to say that the woman is exempt. Right? Oh, so for the oh, so. Kashitziv Hashem, oh, so, as Hashem commanded him. Avroma vino, oh, so for the oh, so. So the woman's exempt. That's what Tosa said. So we mentioned then the other Rishon argument, Tosa, that this has no relevance to Mrs. Zizman Grama. Why? Because we explained Lulav Sukkah. It's what? The Chiyuv is limited to those seven days. Sitting in the Sukkah, the first day, that's it. That's your obligation. The obligation doesn't continue. In terms of Mila, if a child is not circumcised on one day, the next day we circumcise him. Although you can't circumcise him at night. Is that a new obligation? It's the original obligation. Is Aloha, Mila Balayla is not valid. But is it, it's not a new obligation. Here, it's, it's a contingent, it's a new obligation. This year's obligation, not next year's obligation. Or let's say Lulav. Lulav is You can only take Lulav during the daytime. Tomorrow, it's in, let's say, in the base of Mikdash, there's a mitzvah, smachtim, with Hashem, Elokech, and Shivas Yomim. Every day is another day, obligation to take the Lulav. Right? Every day. So therefore, today's obligation is not yesterday's obligation. But Milo, every day, the, until you circumcise him, He's not circumcised, but it's that original chiyuv. This aloha, this chiyuv cannot be executed at night time. That's the Gzeris HaKosov. It's off limits. It's not valid. The act, you cannot, you cannot discharge your obligation at night. But which obligation is it? You have an obligation at night. That's not, the time isn't, doesn't determine the mitzvah. It's determined, it's a place. Right? The time doesn't bring about the obligation. Tosis before learns that if the time has bearing on the mitzvah regardless whether it terms or not, that's classified as mitzvah says my grandma. It's not mitzvah says my grandma. Tosis she says it is. Other Rishon will argue. It's not a mitzvah says my grandma. It's the same mitzvah, except the Torah says this cannot be discharged at night time. What about if you have that? Pidyavan, for sure not. Once it starts, it continues. Child is be redeemed till the end of his life. It's the same thing. During the day, not at night. Every day. It is time. It is time to bound. No comparison. Every moment you have no obligation to 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 to, to, to witness is on the four corner of the Today's mitzvah is not tomorrow's mitzvah. Right? Besides, it's a garment. No, every moment. Today I have to wear it, I have to wear it, on my garment, tomorrow I have to wear it. It's a new obligation. Every day is a new obligation. This child has to be circumcised. Once. He has to be circumcised. And it's, it's, it's on, once it, the obligation comes about, it's continuous. So the time has no bearing on it. Once it begins, which you can't, you're not able to circumcise him at night. The mitzvah cannot be discharged at night. But No, that Tosa says immediately. That Tosa says, once it's, although you have to wait till the eighth day, that's not Mitzvah Zizman Grom. No, I mean, so the, the time, the, it, it, time is determined when the Mitzvah starts. That's not Mitzvah Zizman Grom. That's not. That, that Tosa says, it's, you can't su- char- circumcise the child before the eighth day. Right? That, Tosa, that's not Mitzvah Zizman Grom. But Tosa says, well, now that it's on and off, because at night you can't, then you can. Tosa says, that is. But, but even within that context, it's, again, it's not the, the it's not the classical mitzvahs of Mangroma. But that's Shita's Tosis. Tosis asks a question here: What do I need an exclusion to exclude the woman from smicha? That it says Bnei Yisrael from Nos Yisrael. It's a mitzvah of Mangroma. You can only bring a korban during the daytime. You can't bring a korban at nighttime. So, so what do I need? Exer Sakosu to say a woman is not obligated at smicha. That's Tosis' question. According to other Shem, it's not a question, right? There's a mitzvah to smicha on the korban. Is there a permanent obligation to bring it? Yes. So it's like bris. That's like bris. 
No, so, 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 so Tosis is consistent the way he understands Baris, so this is the same. That's Tosis' question. What do we need in the exclusion to exclude the woman? It's as a mistress of Magrama. According to the other Yishon, of course you need it. It has no relevance to mistress of Magrama. I'm just pointing that out because Tosis the question, uh, the bottom Tosis, Bimtoma, am I Yitzhak Kroh, Bigmar, Lumuti, Noshim, Tebkele, Dukulu, Mitzvah, Shema, Groma, Hu, Havu, Shri, Enu, Nogos, Elu, Biyom, you're only able to do these Mitzvahs only during the daytime, the Chsiv, Biyom, Tzavosa, Lahakriv, Kobaneim, it's only, the Mars is Biyom, Velo, Belayla, you can only be Makriv, the Karma, during the daytime. Okay, we'll see Tosis. Let's do the other case of the Mishnah. Hagoshes v'akmitzos haktoros v'amalikos. Right? Hagoshes taking the mitra, putting it to the corner of the mizbeach, which can only be done by the kohen. Kmitza can only be done by the kohen. If a kohenist does kmitza, it's not valid. Haktoros to be marked to the korban. Hamalikos, the malikos is putting the thumbnail through. It's only the kohen after kohenis. Hagafolos. Receiving the blood hazos, the Marsans go, what is hazo? Does it mean Sri Kazadam? Or does it mean something else? So the Marsans say it's speaking about where you take, we're talking about the bird. We use the bird itself. After you do Malika, you take the bird, you shake its neck, or you press its neck against the Mizbeach. A woman, a, a, a Baskon, is not qualified. Noagim ba noshim, but open noshim. All this that's previously stated, the first two cases, is only that's even the male Yisrael, but not the, fe- the woman. The, from Hagoshim onward, it's only the Kohen and not the Bas Kohen. Noeges Benoshim, Noagim Benoshim, Benoshim, Chutz Mincha Soto, Unazira. And Soto has to bring a Mincha, it's known as Minchas Kinos. Nazira, a woman's a Nazir, when it's up, she has to bring a Mincha, that's one of the Korban she has to bring. Shem Benifos, this is Nufa. The waving. Normally, Tanuf has no relevance to women, but by Mintra Sota and Nizira, she does. She waves those two carbonos. Okay? Some are smichos. How do we know that a woman does not do smicha? Whether she's a Bas Yisrael or not a, or a Bas Kohen? The Chsiv Darbel B'nei Yisrael, B'Somach. B'nei Yisrael Somchim, Vein B'nei Yisrael Somchos. B'nei Yisrael do smicha, below benos. Main benos is also first. It's an exclusion. Tenufos, tenufos is the waving of the korban. That's where you lift it up and down and in and out. Dabrel b'nei Yisrael, v'heinif. So again, it says, b'nei Yisrael, v'heinif. B'nei Yisrael, menifin, v'hein benos is menifos. The male does tenufa, not the woman. Hagoshos, this is already by the, by the Kohen. Who does who puts the the mincha <coughs> to the to the corner of the mizbeach? You put it to the <coughs> southwestern corner of the mizbeach. The chsiv zos torasa mincha hakriv also bnei aron. That's hakriv. Bring it close. Bnei aron v'lo benos aron. Again, the male and not the the woman. Kemitzos. You know, it's interesting. We said earlier that Emeril HaKohanim Nefesh Lo Yitam Ebamov. We spoke about Hashchos uh, Espeo, Pas Hazoka, and his womb forbidden to use a straight blade, so on and so forth. <coughs> Everything that it says in the parsha mm-hmm. does it apply? Is it only the coin, not the, the Bas coin? So, over there, so it says, Kohanim, B'nei Aron, V'lo B'no So then we, we discussed, what is the Torah saying? Is the Torah saying that a uh, Bas Kohen is not a Kohen? So if, if that's what the Torah is saying, what, what do we need all these exclusions? We have multiple. So we see everything after said and done. We see a Bas Kohen. She does have halachas. Like we brought the proof, a Bas Kohen. If she's single, she eats truma. If she's married and then she's widowed or divorced, she has no children, she can use the truma. So you see, a truma can only be eaten by the what? Only by the Kohen. So you see a Bas Kohen, she has Kedusha's Kuna. Because without Kedusha's Kuna, so we said, if it's uh, uh, Everett uh, Kanani, so that's Kenya Kaspo. 
Asia's Cohen is Kidney Cosmo. But a Bas Cohen is not Kidney Cosmo, right? It's, 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 he's not, she's not the chattel of the father. Because even when she's beyond Nairos, when she's a full mature woman, she continues to eat Truma. So you see there's something innate in her Kedusha that a woman also has the Kedusha. So since she has a Kedusha, the question is, what are the limitations of that Kedusha? So we need multiple exclusions going from whatever said Emara Kohanim to all these other cases, to what, which the Kohen is qualified, the Torah has to bring a positive, to say the woman is not qualified. Therefore, the carbon is possible. No, no, but once we've started, we've excluded her. Tumet doesn't apply to her. No. Why? Why? The Torah says, B'nai Arav, Adol, B'nai Saran. Finished. A Kohen is a, is a Ben Arav, not a ben, Bas Kohen. Not a Bas Arav. Finished. She's not a Kohenis. There's no such thing as Kohenis. Right? So evidently, that's not what the Torah is saying. If you need multiple exclusions, you see that she is a Kohenis. There is a concept known as a Bas Kohen. And because of that, maybe she would be qualified. We only know she's not qualified in areas where she's excluded. So if I need continuously multiple exclusions to exclude her from every area where she's not qualified, that's what the Torah has to state, has to state the exclusions. How are we learning about a Bas Kohen? Regarding what? Regarding no, same thing. Dabra, no, no. She's Jewish. Bas is a Bas Yisro. Yeah. So the Torah, how do we know a woman doesn't do smicha? Right. It says, B'nei Yisro for the B'nos Yisro. So you don't learn it from B'nei No, no, no. It has nothing to do with that. Even though the Bas But there's no exclusion for Bas Kohen by smicha. See, if I have a separate <laughs> exclusion for Bas Kohen, then I have the question as the Gemara says, but we have a Kalva Homer. But Torah doesn't discuss, doesn't mention smicha, an exclusion for Bas Kohen by smicha. It only mentions the exclusions where only a Kohen is qualified. So we understand that if the male Israel is not qualified, do I have to talk about the woman? But if the, if the Kohen is, maybe the Bas Kohen is, so therefore I need exclusions by every one of these cases, it's only Ben Aaron for the Ben Aaron. No, 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 not necessarily. No, you see? No. Aron. You bring your mitra to the Bnei Aron, the Komats, and he does the Kmitsa. Takes the palm full of the mitra, the Komats. Bnei Aron, the Lobinos Aron. Who's qualified to do the Kmitsa? The Bnei Aron. Haktoros is the sacrificing of the Korban. The Ksiv, the Ktiro, also Bnei Aron. Again, Bnei Aron, the Lobinos Aron. Hamalikos, what a Maliko? This is where he puts the thumbnail from the back of the neck of the bird. The Chsiv Umolak Vihiktir. See here it doesn't say. It doesn't say Bnearon, but since the Torah associates Malika Taktoro, Iskish Malika Laktor, we have an exclusion Taktora, right? Bnearon for the Banosaron. Hakabolos, what about to receive the blood? How do we know Basko and it's not a valid? She's not qualified to receive the dam. Ikrivu includes the Kabbalah, Hazos. What about, it says the sprinkling. Now the Gemara is going to ask, the sprinkling of what? Hazot Ehecho. Which sprinkling are we speaking about? E the Porah, are we speaking the sprinkling of the Porah Duma? Elozer Kosovo. It says Elozer. This is the actual slaughtering of the Kabaraduma, sprinkling the blood, whatever has to be done. It says Elozer. That's it. We'll see. Tosis discusses this. Because there's a machlokis in the Gemara, whether that was only then, but Ladoris, even a coin hedging is qualified. Or even Ladoris is limited to the coin goddle. So if it's the coin goddle, it's understood. If the coin hedging is not qualified. Is even the consideration that a Bas Kohen is? But according to the opinion that a Kohen Hedjit is qualified, so I need an exclusion. So what's the more saying? Because it's El Ozer. Right? That's Tosa's question. So Tosa explains it. We'll see. Eid for El Ozer Ksibo. Eid Pnim. What about it's the, the carbon that has to be, like Parhel and Dover, has to be brought, the blood has to be sprinkled towards the Parochis. Right? 
or in the Mizbech Apnimi, on the inner Mizbech, in the in the covet in the Hechol, Hakoin Hamoshiach. Same thing. So e- even if a coin hedge, it doesn't qualify. Is there consideration that a woman would qualify? But those again, the but there's an opinion that says that even a coin hedge, it qualifies. Is, that no, no, no. It means in the Hechel. The Hechel. Right before. The current, that's right before the parochas. Okay? El Hazor. El Hazor de Benof. We're talking about Hazor of the bird. We use the body of the bird to sprinkle on the Mizbeach. Rashi says, the Chsim Bechatos Of, he's a Midam Hachatos. Right? You should sprinkle from the Dam Hachatos Of. Vitzur Lashmina Noshim Psulos. Okay, and how do we know that? How do we know she's not qualified to sprinkle from the bird itself on the Mizbeach? Da'asi b'kal b'chomer, and learn from b'kal b'chomer. Mi ben zon. From a regular korban. When you bring a sheep. Oma ben zon, shlo kova lo koi. Lishchit also. Right? We say, shchit is cher bezor. If a woman wants to bring a, do the shchit on a korban, it's valid. Right? Oma ben zon, shlo kova lo koi, lishchit also. Kovan Kohen Laza also a regular Kovan who's qualified to do the Zrika, only a Kohen, not a woman. Right? Because it says Vikrivu, Ben Aaron. Ben Ov Shekovan O Kohen Lumlikoso. So regarding the bird which only a Kohen qualifies for Lumlikoso, also, because it says a Molak Vihiktir, we excluded a woman. Right? And a Zor is not qualified. Ain't Odin Shekovan Laza also, so there's no question. That she's not going to be qualified to use the bird sprinkled directly from the bird. To be, 